Well, praise God for another opportunity and privilege to come to you from Cornerstone Church right here in Jacksonville, Florida and bring to you the living word of God. We'll pray and we'll get into our message tonight on the faithfulness of God, part two. Probably finish up tonight unless God's got a different idea. Okay? Let me pray and we'll get right into it. Father, I want to thank you once again for the privilege of coming before these your precious sheep. I ask you for a divine utterance that I may speak the oracles of God boldly. Also proclaim by faith that no weapon formed against us meeting shall prosper. Any tongue that should try to rise against it in judgment will fall. And why is that? Because it's the birthright and the heritage of the steward of the servant of the Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that uh, the incorruptible seed, once again, of your word will proceed out of my mouth in such a way that the DNA of that word will land in the hearts of the believers. It will take up root and residency there and manifest it itself into a harvest of blessings that only your word can produce in the life of a, a hearer and one that not only hears it, but it, uh, decides to believe it and receive it. And if you do that, say it, amen in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise amen. God. Glory to God. We've been talking about the faithfulness of God. Really, <clears throat> this subject matter is, uh, you know, you go, why, why don't you call it faith? You know, you can talk about faith. But I explained last week, and we'll have a little short review and then get into part two. Uh, I explained last week that really the rendering of faith in the Bible is faithfulness, okay, faithfulness. It's also one of the fruits of the Spirit listed in the book of Galatians. It says that we have love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith is there, meekness and temperance. But I did a study a number of years ago on the fruit of the Spirit. I did a series on it, in fact. And uh, I was really surprised that when I got into that study that um, <laughs> it had a tremendous amount to say about really the true rendering of faith, which is faithfulness. Mm -hmm. I made a commentary just by the inspiration of the Spirit of God that, you know, those of us that, are, that make it to heaven, mm -hmm. uh, he's not going to say, uh, wow, you did a great job and, uh, you know, just so proud of you or... Uh, you know, you really built your faith, too, by the way. You know, you were a mountain mover in my name. Uh, come on into the joy of the Lord. Yeah. No, he's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Okay, enter into the joy of the Lord. Yeah. Okay, just for a quick review, and then we'll, we'll jump into some things. For the benefit of those that were not here last week, and also for our viewing audience. <clears throat> I said last week, talking about the faithfulness of God, that faith receives from God. We see that Hebrews 11, 11, talking about where Sarah conceived. She believed God, and she conceived or received from God. You don't have to turn there right now. You can, but it's Hebrews 11. Again, this would just be quick review. We also see in the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews, in verse 6, that those that come to God must believe that he is God, and he's something else. He's a rewarder. Yes. Uh, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So reward is inherent in the nature of God. And uh, that is another whole subject matter. And I'm hoping before, uh, sometimes maybe this year, whenever I got the release of the Lord, and the pastor still has me up here, uh, I'm going to teach. In fact, I'm going to write a book on it if I obey God. And I, I intend to obey um, on the doctrine of reward. It won't be named that. It's going to be called the reward of the Lord. However, interesting enough, it'll really have to do with the judgment seat of Christ because people are afraid of judgment. I'm not getting off track because of that home track because without faithfulness, you're not going to see. You go, oh, well, man, that, that's pretty sober. John's kind of mean, kind of direct. No, I'm telling you because I've got a viewing audience watching too. Only the faithful. Amen. I said only the faithful will see. Now, no, I take, I heard the Lord say, no, they'll see me, but they want to appear before the judgment seat of Christ where I'm there as their advocate, their standby. I'm standing right there, right there, okay, with the Almighty. That's right. And I like what Kenneth Copeland said. Well, how do you plead? He goes, I plead the blood. <laughs> yeah. I just plead the blood. I'm not, I don't know. He's my defense attorney anyway. And once he gets that, Jesus will nod and the Father will go, yep, yep, cool, let him in. All right. But the great white throne judgment, uh -oh. uh, one of the things that's definitely going to come on uh, video cam in heaven is uh, 
their unfaithfulness. Mm -hmm. uh, disobedience and a lot of things. But faithfulness is huge. And faithfulness is what moves the hand of God. Humility, of course, is all tied to it. So we'll, we'll, we'll continue here and you'll see kind of where I'm going with this thing. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Slow down my spirit here. By that holy word from the St. John's. All right, again, we're just a quick review. Therefore, we should be people of faith, okay? Because faith receives from God. Romans 1.17, that, that I mentioned, that shows us that faith should be a way of living, okay? Romans 1.17, so that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, but it should be a way of living. The word just means to be declared righteous or justified based on the works of Jesus on our behalf. Okay? Note, that would mean all, say all, all. the time. <laughs> I mentioned 24-7, 365 days a week. Okay? The just shall live by faith. Okay? 1 Timothy 6-12, it reminds us we are in a fight. And it's a faith fight. Yeah. But I told you the good news about that is, is that we win the fight. Yeah. When we go into the battlefield of life or we go into the ring yes, to fight a real enemy. And I said a real enemy because we have one. Yeah. And he's defeated yes, he and descent. Well, yeah, let me make a commentary. I know we get excited about, yeah, he's defeated. It's over. Well, yes and no. Yeah. You go, wait a minute. What do you mean? No? Yeah, he is defeated. But... If it was just all over, the Bible wouldn't declare to us believers, us, and that we must fight the good fight of faith or faithfulness. Amen. Okay? Uh, it would not tell us about wrestling with uh, principalities and powers and darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. Again, I'm very careful. I don't, I'm not trying to exalt the, the enemy or the devil and any of that. But we do have a word, worthy adversary, and I didn't make this up. It's in the Bible. The Bible calls him an adversary. Mm -hmm. Your adversary, the devil, mm -hmm. I said the devil, and I'm just obeying God on wealth notes, but I ain't off his notes. The devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. It doesn't say he's walking about devouring everybody. And this is critical because I also mentioned, too, this Bible right here, mm -hmm. particularly the New Testament, mm -hmm. is written primarily, bless God, for the believer. It is written for the believer. Amen. That's okay. Jesus just sent me a text and said, you're right on track. Praise God. All right. <clears throat> yeah, it's written for the believer. Thank you, Lord. For me. He said, go back to that. This is the instruction manual for life. You've heard me say before, even though it's a cute phrase, I like it. The Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. When I was growing up, I was one of the things that I did for quite some time is I was a service technician. I wasn't a mechanic. I was a technician. There's a difference. I was factory trained. I was a graduate from Kawasaki Motorcycles Technical Training Institute. I went to Atlanta, Georgia, and I didn't go up there for two minutes either to be gold certified. I had to go through class after class after class, and it was tests each week at the end of those sessions, of those classes, in order to graduate. That gold certificate gave me an entitlement to this day, even though I don't have to wrench no more. Now I get to preach. I'm wanting to do it all the time, and I, and I got a feeling God's going to let me. Amen. But it gave me the privilege and opportunity. All I had to do was walk into any Kawasaki shop anywhere in the world, I said, not just in the United States, thank you, anywhere in the world, and show, uh, walk in, I don't have to fill out no resume, nothing. All I had to do is lay that down on the president's desk or the general manager or whoever was running that motorcycle shop. And when I laid that gold certificate down, that was it. That's all he needed. If he needed somebody, I was hired right then. That told him everything he needed to know. Well, when I went to American Honda's Technical Training Institute, it was the same thing, okay? I was a graduate. 
I study it. This Bible says to study. Second Corinthians, excuse me, Second Timothy 2.15 says to study. There's a difference between reading your Bible and studying your Bible. Mm -hmm. Study to show thyself approved unto who? To, to Jimmy or the pastor? No. no. Unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the truth or the word of the Lord. Amen. Okay? Why did I talk about the schools I went to? One of the things that we did were manuals. Manuals from the manufacturer. We're manufactured from somebody. Yes, the Almighty. Yes, the Almighty. I knew this was going to happen today, too, because as I was putting this together, I, I knew it in my spirit. Because whenever, I just knew it. It was an interesting afternoon I spent with God. So I'm going to flow with it. I was talking about this here. This is the manual for our life. Yeah. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Mm -hmm. Though I was a trained technician, okay, I was not only that, I was a high performance engine builder, I was a machinist, and uh, it didn't just fall on me either. It took faithfulness to acquire that, by the way. The Lord had me say that. I had to be faithful in my pursuit of that. What do you mean by that? What do you mean faith? Faithful to show up, faithful to get there on time, faithful to study, faithful to do, apply what had been learned. Okay? God is no different. Amen. He's no different. When I was looking, say, my new current year model came out, even though I was trained, one of the things that all of us that were true technicians, in fact, I was so privileged. I had a room of my own. <clears throat> when I worked for this company, they, they gave me my own work area. It was separated from, what, from the line mechanics, the guys that worked on the line. And what would happen occasionally, the line mechanics would run into a problem they couldn't solve. And guess who they came to? Me. That was part of my job as well. When they couldn't figure the problem out, they came to me. And the first thing I told them or asked them, I said, have you gone to the manual? Or get a shop manual on that bike or on that engine, on the suspension, on the electronics, whatever the situation is. Let's start with the manufacturer's handbook or manual. Because that manufacturer built that motorcycle, every nut, bolt, everything on it. Same with automobiles, same with anything, same with rockets, I don't care. Go to the manual. And then we would search through that manual and see what, we didn't try to outthink the manufacturer. They built the thing. We looked at what they had to say about it and troubleshoot, you know, we would troubleshoot the problem that way. That was our first approach. Now, of course, experience comes into play, and guess what? It happens here. The pastor's got 50 years of experience in the ministry. Now, if I got born again, say yesterday, okay, I'm what's referred to in the Bible as a baby in Christ. I cannot know experientially what this my man of God knows. Now I can love God as much. I could love Him more than Him. I can get be hungry, boy, be just start devouring the Word. What turn off all secular things, watch TV twenty four seven. But it's going to take me some catch up time. I got to walk with God a while. I have to be faithful. Talk about faithful. Fifty years. Listen yes. to me. Amen. I'll be. I'm going to go this far. Why do you think I'm up in here in this church? I could serve God anywhere. But I was privileged to meet Ronnie Thomason. Amen. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Thank you, Jesus. It's important who you hit your wagon to. Amen. You with me? Because yeah. okay. all that's on that man, yes. I wanted on me. Amen. And a lot of us getting on me. Yeah. And by the way, too, me and we're right here on, on virtual. I'm going to tell you what, I've seen some, some fire cutting loose lately. On Sunday, have you noticed? Mm. Pastor's been what they call shucking the corn. Mm. And so I've been really excited about that, no doubt about it. Uh, so, yeah, God's doing a work in all of us. Yes. But you, you flow with me so far. <clears throat> we need to know 
what the Word of God has to say in order, and we will get there. We must be armed with knowledge. We must be armed with knowledge and understanding, okay? Because God's people, what does the Word say in Hosea 4, 6? We talked about it last week. They Let's perish. see if anybody can quote it. They perish for a lack of knowledge. That's part of it. Here's what I told you I'm going to have some fun with the audience. Somebody quote that scripture for me. If you can't find it, look it up. I'll give you time while I talk. And I want you to quote it to me properly. Because the first part of the scripture is the most important part of the scripture. Of that scripture. Concerning us as believers. And when you have it, just by the raising of a hand, don't blurt it out. When somebody's got it, raise their hand. All right? Jeff? Is my microphone usher. Here we go. Praise Hello. God in heaven. Let me say this about him. Well, he's not a new convert, bless God, but he's already busy in the ministry. Hand it to that woman right down the back row right there. Miss Irene. Miss, right. And if you will, just re, uh, give us the address and then read the scripture. Hosea 4 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they reject knowledge. Yes, hold that one second. Hey, Don. That's okay. Bless God through faith and patience. We inherit the promise. Go ahead and do it again. It's all, no, it was on. It was off over there. There you go. Now. Hosea 4.6. Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they reject knowledge. They, what's the, they rejected knowledge. My yes. People, what's, the, what's the first part of it? Just say that part. My Who, people are destroyed. Say it again. My people. Are Who? My, my people. Okay. You can give that back to him. Good job. Amen. Amen. Good word. See, my people are destroyed. Go ahead and hang on to it. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge or because, watch this, or because they reject knowledge. Jesus said to those Jews that believed on him, and you know what? I led a Jew to Christ one night. <clears throat> I, was in a, I was in a church. We were actually in an eat meeting. It was a big church. Not that matters, but it was. <clears throat> and we were in another separate room, big giant, giant sanctuary of itself. <clears throat> Nice, having a big big dinner. A lot of people there. A lot of uh, other ministers from in town there as, as well. But uh, where I happened to sit down, I sat down, and there was about say six to eight people at each table, these big round tables, at this dinner. And <clears throat> the people I was sitting next to, the wife of this man, okay, was you could tell just on fire for God, but her husband was a Jewish man, and I'm talking about full-blooded. You understand what I'm saying? Full-blown Jew. And he was there that night, and it was more like kind of this deal. And I could see in her, because I just, God didn't place me there for no reason. Of course, it was his doing, not mine. I'm here, she's there, and he's sitting right there. Thank God I had my Bible with me, though. I had my Bible with me. Everybody, ironically, sitting at them tables didn't have a Bible with them. I won't go nowhere without my Bible. <laughs> I got it all the time. It's in my God. I don't go anywhere, anytime without the Word of God. Amen. Not only in me, but with me. Yes, Amen? Right. Now I'm getting to my point. Where are you going with this? I'm going to John 8, 31, 32. Here's the deal. Go ahead and turn there. Let's look at it. Eight chapter of the book of John. John chapter 8. Okay. I'm not going to turn there. I'm going to let you turn there. <clears throat> when you get there, say amen. 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 All right. Praise God. Jesus said to those Jews, you see that? Mm -hmm. That believed on him. So that shows that some of them did. Now understand, even in his life and earthly ministry, all of them didn't. They did not all believe on him. In fact, the majority of them did not. The Sadducees and Pharisees hated him. They hated him because they were steeped in religion. 
and they were steeped in works, and they were looking for the Messiah, but when love showed up, they couldn't recognize it. Because God is love. Yes, indeed. That's why they got mad when he said, today the scripture's fulfilled in your hearing. That's in another place. We're, we're camping out in John 8. I'm going to finish my story. The Spirit of God dropped that. Thank God this is why we study. It's not exalt me. This is exalt the word of God. Amen. Because see, the word is always anointed, beloved. Mm -hmm. The word is always anointed, I said. Yes, and the more of it you have in you, see, the word Christ means anointed. It actually means to smear in or rub, on, rub into. Yeah. That's where they come up with like Crisco oil. Yeah, it's come from the Chris, Christos, or the anointing. <clears throat> I know some of you look at me like a calf or a new gate with that one. But, yeah, Christ, I'll, I'll make it even further. I'll, I'll drive it home further. It's not his last name. Oh. Jesus means Emmanuel, or God with us, or the anointed one, mm -hmm. Christ. God, the anointed one, with us, and they beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father. Amen? Amen. He was anointed of God. He was the anointed one, his anointing. So, back to John. The Spirit of God said, turn to John, John 8, 31 and 32. And I will do that in my Bible. Yes, sir. He said, I want you to turn there. He said, because I, I'm going to let you be the one. I'm going to prove it you to talk to him. But I'm going to get this guy turned around right now by way of my word. Can you say amen? Amen. And I'll read it with you. John chapter 8. I'm ringing for some reason. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, the devil hates us, is why. If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. But let me back up that part that says, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. And I took my Bible, and I turned it, and I put it in front of him, and I let him read it. Because see, he had always been taught in the Jewish lineage. He didn't believe in Jesus. He thought none of them did. But when I was able to show him that Jesus first said to those Jews who believed on him, and I explained to him right here, some of them did. You ought to see him. He looked at that, he took, and then he re-looked at it. And, and he sat back in his chair, and he looked at me. He looked at his wife, and he looked at me. He looked back, kept looking at it. I said, you see it? You see it? Well, that's you the Spirit of God was on it. He said, I do. He said, oh, my God, it's real. He said, he said so there, were belief, there were Jewish believers. He goes, there were Jewish believers. Hallelujah. And then I said, yeah, would you like to be one of them now? And he said, yes, I would. I said, you know, it's real simple. And I took his hand, and I led him to the Lord right there at that table. His wife had been praying for him for years, and God did it by one scripture in an instant. By one scripture, the Spirit of God received that Jewish man into his kingdom. Glory to God. So we obeyed God in that. You say amen? Amen. All righty. Let me go back. I digress. I hope you got something out of that. So we got to know what the manual says. That was the whole point of all that. We need to know what the book says. Okay, concerning our lives. If you want your life to run right, operate right, you don't want to run out of gas on the side of the road. Okay, when you're in the pathway of life, if you want to be strong, you know what I mean? And victorious. Bless God, you got to know what the manual says and you got to do it the way the manufacturer says do it. Now, maybe a different way of saying it, but does it make sense? Yes. A practical thing. Very practical. Okay, glory to God. All right. <clears throat> All right. Now, I mentioned there are things that we need to know in order to know that God is faithful. And that was tied to Hebrews 11.6. 
In other words, we need experientially to see God's word work in our life. That builds, that, that what that does is show us the faithfulness of God and that builds our faith and faithfulness. Okay? That's because faith begins where the will of God is known and that, of course, is in his word. I said that faith is based on knowledge. All right? If there's no knowledge, back to the Jewish man. It's based on knowledge. He had no knowledge of that. Once that knowledge was imparted to that Jewish man that night, he could exercise faith. If there's no knowledge, you can't exercise faith, period. It's impossible to exercise faith without knowledge. And we prove that out by the word. Last week I'd done the question, is I, I, I tried to make a joke out of it, I didn't really do it great service, but I'll try it again and articulate a little bit better. How many of you tonight came in here as an example, because I, I did it, I, I, I stumbled around a little bit. Tonight we'll get it right. How many of you came in here tonight, because I see at least one person here tonight that wasn't here, I don't think, might have been. How many of you come in here tonight uh, with, without any prior knowledge, without talking to me or anything, and believe that I was going to give you some money at the end of the service. Okay. Nobody. Now, I've said before in bigger service, sometimes people's hands go, because, you know, I, I've been believing for some money or da 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 da. But if I gave you knowledge, I said, if I gave you prior knowledge, we're all coming in the door and getting seated and getting in place, and all of a sudden I stop and say, Sister So and so, Brother So and so, listen here, Lord, put it on my heart, man, that, uh, I just felt like you have a need and you need a couple hundred dollars. I don't know what's going on. You, you go, oh my God, you know, I, I just, I got my light bill. If it's turn my lights off, it was $200. Man, you heard God, da, 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 da. Well, once I, told, once I tell you that, once you know that, now where's your faith at now? You're armed with that knowledge. You're armed with the knowledge of my will. This is God's will. That's the point. Faith begins where the will of God is known. When I'm fully persuaded that what God promised me in my life, he's not only able to do it. We know God's able to do whatever he wants, but he won't just do anything. But when I know that it's his will to do a thing in my life, now I'm in a place of faith because he's faithful. It's the faithfulness of God. Again, no knowledge, you can't exercise faith. It's impossible. Okay, Romans, Romans 10, 17, it's a biblical truth. It even applies in the natural realm. I talked about that last week. Okay, now I like this. I said that's why God uses the principle of teaching or proclaiming verbally because it inspires faith. That's why he elected to do it that way. The Bible talks about it takes the foolishness of preaching, okay, which is also the foolishness of the world to confound the wise, okay, to bring this into our understanding. Again, that's why he uses the principle of teaching or proclaiming verbally because it inspires faith. We can see that too in 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. You can just write it down in 1 Corinthians 1.21. All right, where there is no hearing, or giving of knowledge, there can be no believing. I pointed that out. See, we're believers, okay? But here's the thing. The more knowledge I'm armed with, now I'm a believer. I, that's what, back to the Jew, the Lord won't get me away from it. That enabled him to believe. When he saw that others believed it, there were other Jews that believed on him, it did something to his believing, or his believer inside him. At that point, armed with that knowledge, that man became a believer. Once he believed it, it positioned him to receive from God. Then he acted on that knowledge, and God moved. The Spirit of God moved on him. Now, what happened all those other years? Did God not care? Did God, was God not hearing the prayers of his wife? 
Well, certainly he ultimately did because it happened that night. So her prayers were important. Something I learned a long time ago, like from Kenneth Hagin and other great ministers, that their assignment was teaching on faith and faithfulness. <clears throat> and I told you I was privileged even to be friends with Norval Hayes. I didn't just know, you know, get to sit there. I, I knew him. I knew the man. I learned one thing common from every one of them. I can't get for you what you need from God on my faith alone. This is why people that would go to Benny Hinn Crusades, as an example, under a tremendous anointing that may be happening corporately, they might get healed or something, you know, whatever. Something would happen miraculous in these meetings, sometimes by the thousands. But within weeks, certainly within a month or two, they lose it, be gone. Because it just happened under a corporate anointing and they got touched by the Spirit of God, but then they went off and they, they just abandoned all knowledge. They abandoned the Word of God, the will of God. They didn't feed their faith and starve their doubts to death. They didn't hold on to that which they had been delivered from. They let the enemy creep back in with a symptom, and then they listened to that symptom. Remember, we talked about the filter we talked about a lot last week. I got time to go over it all again tonight. Two voices in the world, the devil and God. The devil, I'm making it plain, and God. This is how, though, when you have this in you, you're able to distinguish the difference. You'll know. Your knower will know. Amen? Amen. All right, praise God. All right, let's see where we're going from here. All right, so we talked about knowledge. Again, it's impossible to exercise faith without prior knowledge. Also, remember I told you we were a royal priesthood too, 1 Peter 2, 9. And of course, we talked last week, a powerful scripture over in Isaiah, they're all powerful, but Isaiah 5, 13 said, talk about captivity. In other words, people are being held captive and it, it, it limits them in everything in their life. A lack of knowledge will hold you captive. Amen? All right. I'm going to read one scripture, and then, believe it or not, and then we'll turn to a couple of them. All right, I'm just going to read it to you. It's found in 2 Timothy. It's in the second chapter. And uh, this is an exhortation, of course, from the Apostle Paul to his, to his son, Timothy. But it's applicable to all our lives. Here we go. It's actually about being a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I will start at verse 1, but number 2 is the one we really want to magnify. Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in the anointed Jesus. It says Christ Jesus, but I recommend, too, every time you see that in your Bible, translate it to the anointed Jesus. Start doing that. Think of him and his anointing, and guess what? The anointing one's in you, and you're anointed. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Why? So I ain't going to be poor no more. To heal the brokenhearted, to bring recovery of sight to blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That is not confined just to Jesus when he read that to those people in Isaiah 61, and they all got mad about it. They handed a book back to the minister, remember? Sat, he said, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing, and sat down. They go, what do you mean it's fulfilled in my hearing? And y'all know the story. Is found there, and it's found in the fourth chapter of the book of Luke. When we got born again, this is after the cross. He said that pre the cross. Amen. But after the cross, and we got born into God's kingdom and filled with the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, Lord. the Spirit of the Lord is upon us, for he's anointed us to preach the good news. That's what the gospel means. To the poor, too, so they would have not just poor in spirit. I used to get that from people, particularly because God had them teach a lot in the area of finance. Well, you know, the poor will be with you always, Jimmy. I said that's true because you know why? They lack knowledge. Mm -hmm. They don't know it's God's will for them to prosper. Beloved, above all things, I wish you'd prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Third John 2. Yeah. They don't serve God, they're faithless. 
I'm not, I'm not beating up on people. I'm telling you why people, according to this word, are destroyed. They're not, that, that, they don't just not have faith. It's not a matter of just faith. They haven't come to know the Lord and then be a faithful steward. Amen. All right. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. Let's look at that. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. I'll turn there with you in our biblicals. 1 Corinthians 4, 2. I can just quote it. I know what it says, but and the goal is that we all know what it says. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. There's second. We want to go to 1 Corinthians. Go figure. I'm turning in my Bible. One, you know, another thing I love about the word, I love the word period, but just like happened with a Jew, I keep hearing the Lord, he's got me stuck there. One word from God or one scripture. It don't take the whole word. No, well, you want them to learn it. Okay? But one word from God. But notice it's from God. Because God's word is what's got the power on it. Amen. Amen. If you're there, say, I have it. I have it. Moreover, in fact, read it with me. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found what? Faithful. And what are we talking about? Faithfulness. You said, well, the faithfulness of God, it works both ways, reciprocal. God doesn't ask us to do anything he don't do. Nothing. <laughs> He's faithful all the time, but he wants his believers to be faithful. God, hear me plainly, rewards faithfulness like you can't even hardly believe. I don't like to say it that way because we need to believe it. God rewards, I said, faithfulness. It's all over the Bible. All right, that's just one scripture there. So we've seen that. What do we glean from that? What, what would my speaking or his speaking say out of my mouth? Faithfulness is a requirement. It's not a suggestion. It's required. And stewards, which means servant to the servant of the Lord, that a man or a woman be found faithful. Okay? All right, glory to God. 1 John 1, 9. This is just something to look at the, the faithfulness of God right here. I'm going to start up above it though. Because even though this is about walking in the light, it's still, it's still tied to faithfulness. This whole Bible, what God has shown me, this whole Bible is about faithfulness in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, in the New Testament. The more faithful you are in handling this and doing what God tells you to do, the more the blessings of God will be on your life, period. You can't stop it. They'll run down and overtake you. It was in Amos 9, by the way, pastors, where it was, that scripture you were, when you said that it had been spoken in this church that the reaper, they would overtake the reaper and the harvest. Well, that's found in Amos 9, okay, 13. All right, check it out. They'll overtake you, I said. That's what we want. The blessings of the Lord will run you down and overtake your life. Were you experiencing that? Maybe I should be that bull. Yes. <laughs> the favor of God is on me all the time. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, I'll share this. Uh, I had a gentleman, uh, there was a place that I was parking cars. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. There was a place that I was for a while privileged to park a car because I sell cars now and then. And I was informed that, listen, we were making some changes and we need to move that vehicle. And on that vehicle, it had a for sale sign on it with my phone number. Okay? Obviously, I did the right thing. Yes, sir, I'll do that. Uh, I'll be right on it. I think I'll be moved in 30 minutes. And it happened that way. It wasn't 30 minutes. I had that thing moved and I took it to a private parking area that I have where I have a private office. And I backed it up. I got out of it. My wife followed me there so I could park it. Brought me back to my other car. Right? Mm -hmm. The next morning, I got a phone call and a car sold. 
God says, I ain't a parking lot. I'm the Almighty. That's right. Son, I've watched you your whole life. You've been faithful. Hey, let me, now, let me read this, and I, then I got a goodie for you to, to wrap things up with. You, you'll like this. God is faithful, I said. Boy, he tidied that up so quick, and I was out there praying, and I said to myself, when people drove off, I thought to myself, man, we sing that song, what a mighty God we serve, but I'm out there knowing what a mighty God I serve. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Lord said, I, I don't care. Yeah, I can't remove, the only thing to remove the blessings off of your life, you go acting crazy. <laughs> he said, but you know, you're faithful to me, you're faithful to sow into my kingdom, you're faithful to be a doer of my word and not a hearer only. He said, I ain't playing. I'll meet all your needs according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. There's someone too, and I don't know if they're here tonight. If not, I almost did it Sunday. Of course, I would do it with permission. I almost flagged pastor down. You know, like there's someone here. I don't know if they're here tonight. Uh, it may not be because Sunday we always we have a bigger we have a bigger turnout. There's someone here that's believing for. Uh, a debt reduction. Um, they want to pay off. They want to get out of debt. Period. They want to pay off their home. They have a business, or they're either seeking or thinking about a business, and they want. They want. They're praying for that, and they're they're seeking God about that, and also for their business to grow. Is that person here tonight? Stand up. Come up here, please. Microphone. Get that microphone. <laughs> Turn on that mic and come get in front of the camera. Is she on, Don? Hey, man. Now, I have another thing to. Um, it's him too now. Um, I had taught, I'm just curious. I had, and during, because I know you and your husband were faithful to come to a lot of the biblical economics classes and listen to this and the other. Uh, when you sowed your financial seed and you were believing for that, did you declare that before God when you sowed your seed? Did you take any action? Well, all right, I'm going I'm to let you then tell us exactly what you did. And uh, you're telling me you named your seed? All right. Talk. Well, we were taught to um, yeah. put, put name, the mic name our seed. Don't just, we have to be uh, intentional. Um, so I, my husband and I have been in agreement to write down in the envelope. So it's intentional. So we would be expecting exactly what it is, and and so we write it out. We write out that um, um, just that that we want our our mortgage paid and and the business. That's exactly the two. I would put the um, uh, debt either debt cancellation or. Um, uh, mortgage paid off and business to prosper and uh, looking for you know business partners so it's the, the two things that you've said <laughs> glory to God Jesus. well I wonder thank you sister let's thank give you. the Lord praise you, I wonder if God's going to honor that <laughs> I wonder if the spirit of God's going to honor it. Yes. I would encourage you one thing sister too and with Pastor Robert your husband continue to do that now where you're at, let me tell you what you do now. I'm going to help you with that too. It's, it's the Spirit of God is going to help you, but it's just going to use my mouth to do it. What you do now, just start declare, thanking him for it. Anything you can thank God for before you see it, he'll let you see it. You see, we walk by faith, not by sight. See, faith is the evidence of things hoped for, okay? Somebody find that scripture for me. So faith is the evidence of things. Find that scripture for me. When you do, Jeff will give him the microphone. And then I'll talk while you're doing that. Excuse me, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But somebody find that scripture for me. Or do you know where it is? Right behind you, brother, hand it to brother Harold there. Read it for us, brother Harold, if you will. Break it down, baby. No, faith. Yeah, turn him, uh, my, she probably, turn him, turn him. This is going to be an interesting one, be a video in it. <laughs> well, now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, 
Boy, God didn't show up. Listen to that voice. Yeah, I know. It's beautiful. <laughs> the Thank evidence you. of things not seen. <laughs> love it. I love it. Now, you got to read that again, brother, with that voice. Break it down. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Glory to God. And where is that at? What's the address? Hebrews 11 and 1. 11 and 1. It's in the Bible. Go figure. Now, God forbid we'd have fun in church, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a whole other story. Amen. Okay. I'll give you a Joyce Meyer story. <clears throat> I gave you a, a, a Norval Hayes story. I gave you a Fred Price story. He's got to see now. He passed away, and we honored him last week. Give you a Joyce Meyer story. <clears throat> Joyce Meyer, as you know, has been ministering for 40 now, I think 42 years, yeah, you know, pushing 45 years. But there was a period of time in her ministry after many, 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 many years, decades of ministering. <laughs> it's, it's a funny in a way. It's very funny to me in a way. But uh, a a member or a believer or whatever, somebody that had been very very faithful and loyal in, in her ministry, approached her and said, you know, um, Sister Joyce, I, said, I, don't, I don't know, but um, I just don't seem to be, uh, I'm not receiving, I'm like, I'm not, I don't know what's wrong, I'm not, I don't think I'm getting anything out of it anymore. You know, I, I'm just not, because, you know, a lot of times it gets repetitive. You know, you, you preach the same thing you, you do. You know why? Because you're supposed to. Okay, because God's word doesn't change. And uh, she had sat in her ministry a long time, and she said, you know, I just, I just don't feel like I'm getting fed anymore. I don't feel like, and the Bible talks about itching. Those In the latter days, there'll be those that'll come with itching ears, seeking teachers. With, you know why? That means hearing what they want to hear. Okay? But she said, <laughs> she went this far with it. She told Joyce Meyer, she says, uh, I mean, she even went so far, she says, you know, I don't know if, uh, I mean, there's sin, you got around, you know, there's sin in her life or, you know, there's something going on, uh, but I, I, the anointing seems to have, have shifted. Uh, there seems to be a change in the anointing and da 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 da. Well, instead of Joyce, uh, Sister Joyce getting, or Joyce Meyer getting all this work, you know, out of shape with a sister that told her this, uh, she didn't do that. She just, but she just stepped back from it. And because words are seeds, we ever had anybody teach about that? Because words are seeds, and you plant them by speaking them. Well, she's still a person. Amen? Anointed of God, in my opinion, one of the best Bible teachers on God's green earth. Amen. No doubt about it. Um, she's still a person. She, she, she stepped back from that, and she asked the Lord, she said, is that true? Is there any truth to that, or... Or maybe am I, a, am I at a place where, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I've lost my zeal or, I'm, you know, or is anything wrong, you know? And, uh, and she said, the Lord spoke up on the inside of her. She said, and he said to her this, this is what he said to her. And she, she goes, what, what am I doing? I, what, you know, what's going on with me? You know what? And, he, and this is what the Lord said. Because that's right. She asked, she said, what's, what's going on with me? And he said to her real quickly, he said, you're being faithful. You're being faithful. What do I mean by that? She didn't necessarily feel like it. She shares a story too about this. And she does it carefully with the people. I mean, it'd be 30,000 people out there. I mean, Joyce will break it down. She'll tell them, she'll say, look, I don't do this for fun anymore. This is not my first Joyce Meyer meeting, <laughs> okay? But I do it because I love the people. I love the Word of God. I love to see people's lives change by way of the Word of God. I want to see people. I want to help people. And this is the answer. And it's what turned my life around. So she's saying, don't get me wrong. It's not that I, don't, I love, don't love you. I love you. That's why I do. I love you. I love the Word, this, that, and the other. But I'm not as excited as I was. It's not like I get all real worked up and, uh, you know, about the next meeting. She said, because this is, I've been, to, I've been to a few Joyce Meyer meetings <laughs> after 40 years. So what happens after the, the new wears off? See, everybody wants a new thing. That was the point. 
They want a new thing. They want a new word. They want a, something that, you know, da 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 da. Let me tell you what God looks at. When all the feelings go away, in season, out of season, when you feel like it, when you don't, that's where the faithfulness kicks in. Mm -hmm. When you do it anyway. Amen. There ain't no hand claps. There ain't no pats on the back. Let me tell you something, but with all bonus, Help me, Lord, I don't like this crying. I'll be right here as long as I'm allowed to sit right in front of that camera. If it's me, Spirit of God, and my wife running that camera, and that's it, I'll be here and I'll be here on time. You know why? Because I'm going to show myself and prove myself faithful to God because he was faithful to me. Amen. I'm a product of his faithfulness. I shared that about my life in only a little. Mm -hmm. If you knew and heard my whole testimony, just like Joyce Myers, many of you have heard hers. If you haven't, I recommend look her up and find out what God brought her out of the hell that that woman went through and what it took. But what? There's a scripture in the Bible, and she even wrote a book on it. It's called Beauty for Ashes. Beauty for Ashes. And her life is the product of that. It's the product of God's faithfulness. But it's also the product of her faithfulness. Mm -hmm. She remained faithful. She even went so far to tell a joke about She's been married, I think, 52 years or something to, to Dave, her husband. And <laughs> she makes the joke. She, you know, she used to be pretty funny. She says, uh, she says, I've been married for 52 years because every time Dave walks in the room, I get goosebumps. <laughs> um, she says, just a goosebump. No, she's been married, and he's been married to her. Vice versa, it's both. They've been able to stay together for 52 years. And stay committed and loyal and faithful to one another, faithful to one another because of faithfulness. And that doesn't mean they don't love each other anymore, and it doesn't mean there's never no intimacy there. But it's not like the first date, you know what I mean? Or there, or when you're courting. Let's get real. See, it can be, it's easy to get that way. Thank you, Lord. It's easy to get that way in the things of God to get complacent. You follow me? Where we lose our zeal. And really, I believe a lot of it's all about attitude of gratitude. A grateful heart. A grateful heart. I want to do everything I can for God while I'm here. And I'm looking for that day when I hear those words. But I'll, I don't have to earn God's love. I don't want to use the word earn. But at the same time, Faith without works or corresponding action. Faithfulness is dead being alone, James said. Can you say amen? amen? Praise God. We can go further tonight, but we're not going to do it because we're out of time. Bless God. We started a little bit late tonight, but it's okay. The sister, I'm going to say this before I close the broadcast back to this. What you do is Thanksgiving. I had Harold read that scripture. You know, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen yet. You and Pastor Robert, now what you do, now you're at a place already where God has brought it to the light in public. What you do now is continue to sow and proclaim over those financial seeds and thank God for it happening. But remember this. This is going to help the viewing audience too. We are co-laborers with Christ. God does his part, you do your part. And evidently, you're doing something. You're not just, you know, just, you just name it and claim it. Steps must be taken. To, you know, don't fall out of debt. But if you rearrange your finances and you stay and you get in alignment with the Spirit of God and what you're believing for, it's inevitable it's going to come to pass. And I'll go so far as to tell you it's going to happen really quick if you stay on point. Can you say amen? So the next time we get together around God's word, you know, Brother Jim always liked to tell you that God loves you 
And we love you, Jesus is Lord, and we never like to close our broadcast without giving you the opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. So all you got to do is say with me these simple words. Just say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I believe in my heart that Jesus died on the cross for me and that he was raised from the dead. And with that belief, I confess out of my mouth that Jesus is Lord and I make him my personal Savior and I receive all the benefits and blessings that come with it. And we love you. And if we believe, too, if you said that, we're in agreement with you that you got born into God's kingdom. He'll take you places you never dreamed of, exceeding abundantly, in fact, above all that you can ask or think. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.